Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, I'm Mustard Saves, and welcome to an inside look on one of my longest standing addictions. Instant Ramen is often hailed as the savior of the financially challenged. It's not that great for your health, the packaging is even worse for the environment, but gosh darn it, is it cheap. Which makes it the perfect base to build off of to make a delicious and satisfying meal when you're working on a budget. As you can see, I have quite the collection. It's certainly nowhere near the level of variety that it could be, but as someone who has a certified addiction to noodles and is also trying to stay bougie on a budget, this is about how much I keep on hand to both satisfy my addiction as well as ensure that I am properly rotating through my stock. And believe me, on this side of the camera, I do eat a lot of this stuff, so today I'm going to be sharing with you a few of my favorite ways to elevate instant ramen. And I'll be moving out of this apartment in about 25 days, and I am trying to clean out the fridge, so there might be some lacking in the vegetable department, but everything you're about to see is just a suggestion to get some ideas started on your end, so you're totally encouraged to add anything else that you would like to to these in air quotes, recipes. Our first stop is all about toppings. Here I'm starting with an Indonesian mie goreng instant noodle. Mie goreng literally translates to fried noodles and for between 60 to 75 cents, you're gonna be hard pressed to find an instant noodle that can pack more flavor than these. You just cook your noodles on the side, drain most of the water off of them and mix in the seasoning packets. I do like to reserve some of the noodle water in case things get a bit sticky or they're harder to mix together, but that's about it. And for today, I kept the toppings pretty simple. The noodles are really fast to prepare, so while my water was coming to a boil, I sliced and fried some Spam, and we really love adding fried eggs on top of mie goreng. Things like green onion, spinach, bok choy, cilantro, and lime juice are all other things that I've added to this type of noodle, but this is just what I had going on in the fridge today. And we unfortunately only had one egg left in the fridge, so one bowl got an egg, and the other bowl got our last jalapeno popper from a date night we'd had the day before. And this was actually date night number two, so since we'd eaten out the night before, we kept things pretty low-key with this ramen, a $3.50 bottle of wine from Dollar General, and a movie we checked out from the library. Nothing too crazy, but definitely a good night for us indeed. Next up is my partner's personal favorite peanut butter ramen. We're going to be adding a few other things to this packet of top ramen, but at the bare minimum, if you're a fan of peanut butter, I highly recommend you try putting one or two tablespoons of peanut butter into your ramen. Peanut butter lends not only a really good peanutty flavor, but it also makes the ramen very creamy, and how much water you add can change the creaminess. We tend to scale back on the water a little bit, so that way everything comes out nice and thick, but definitely play around with it for your personal preference. And as a pro tip, when you're adding extra flavors and seasoning, like how here I'm adding soy sauce and fish sauce, if you're using multiple packs of ramen or even just one pack of ramen, cut back on the amount of seasoning packet that you add in because the seasoning packet is not only going to make it super, super salty on top of the other things you're already adding, but you definitely don't want to drown out the flavors that you're adding. So like in this case, I did make three packs of ramen total, but I only used two of the seasoning packets to mix in with the rest of the stuff that I was adding. And just to get some veggies in, I have this container of failed sauerkraut that I wanted to finish up. It's not rotten, but it doesn't really taste like anything other than squeaky cabbage. It's totally safe to eat, it's just not very aesthetically pleasing. For my favorite ramen, I love making Tex-Mex flavored ramen. I started making this back when I worked at a Subway because I could bring home all of the veggie ingredients. And it's just something that I've continued to make now that I no longer work at a Subway. But for this one, I like to start with bell pepper and onion. And once that comes to a boil, it's time to add in your noodles and some tomato. For today's seasoning, I just kept it super simple and only used cumin, but I've also added chili powder and garlic powder. And then we're just going to let everything go and let it start getting cooked up. 
And once everything is done, I put it into a bowl, topped it off with some cilantro and lime juice, and called it a day. If you've got any leftover meats in the fridge, that would also be a nice addition to it. There were some chicken patties that we were supposed to throw away at the end of the day at Subway, but I would just take them home, chop them up, toss them into my ramen broth, and boom, I had some extra protein. And I don't know if this is a pro tip or if it's just something that my grandpa did while I was growing up, but when we were little, we were too impatient to wait for the soup to cool down, so when he would make us instant ramen in the microwave, he would add an ice cube to it to cool it down really quickly. And he would also make sure to cook the ramen with a little bit less water so that way when he added the ice cube it wouldn't like overwater the soup. I'm not sure if many people are going to agree with my decision to put an ice cube in my ramen, but it's something that I do and I don't know, I just, I've never seen anybody else do it so I wanted to ask you guys if you did it too. On the days that I have more time and patience, I do put more effort into what I'm making. On this day, the plan was to make spicy ramen with rice cakes. I made a quick sauce out of Korean pepper flakes, garlic oil, gochujang, honey, soy sauce, and fish sauce. And then tragedy struck when I realized the last of my rice cakes had gone bad. It was a major bummer, but I moved on and just substituted with another block of ramen. I had some carrots and a few fish cakes to use up. And I was out of spam, but I had this can of Vienna sausages. I'm definitely plating this all together to make it look nice for you guys, but usually I would bring the water up to a boil first and then add all of this stuff in. So once we're at the point where the noodles are starting to break up, I did add in all the sauce packets from the spicy ramen, a few spoonfuls of the sauce that I'd made, and then cracked in two eggs. If you like your eggs well done, you can poke the yolks, but we'd like to keep them runny, so I put the lid on to trap the heat and help the whites set. And then a few minutes later, to finish it off, I sliced up some mozzarella cheese to sprinkle on top. I didn't feel like getting the cheese grater for this bit, so once again, my presentation is a bit ugly, but I swear it tastes better than it looks. And I also don't buy cheese often, so I did not get a mozzarella cheese that melts very well, apparently. I got block cheese, and there were like three different types of block cheese at Walmart, so I just picked one, and apparently I picked wrong. And compared to all the other ramens, this is definitely a bit more of a more expensive ramen to put together. All the ingredients combined, I think, are about like $25 just to buy the fresh, you know, like a whole bag of rice cakes, whole bag of fish cakes, that kind of stuff. But you can make this like five or six times from that $25. So ultimately, your costs still balance out and it's actually still incredibly cheap to have this ramen dish for dinner. And alrighty, I think that's all the ramen content I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. I literally still have so much footage of all the different types of ramen that I make at home. It's seriously not even funny, but I'm going to stop it here because at, at one point I just really feel like it gets really repetitive. Really what I want you guys to take away from this video is that ramen can be so much more than just the simple packet it comes with. I've kind of been thinking about starting a series on YouTube shorts of all the different ways I make ramen, and if that sounds like something you guys would be interested in, feel free to let me know. And yeah, that's everything I had to share with you guys. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. If you liked the video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more money-saving content, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye!